flowchart example, checkout system. The following flowchart outlines the processes involved when using a checkout system to buy products at a store. The context that we'll look at this system will include the following steps. So firstly, users are able to scan the barcodes of products in order to enter them into the system. Secondly, the system then will search for product details based on the scanned product input and then retrieve the product price about the product that's stored on the system. Thirdly, the product price will be displayed on screen as a visual output to confirm the price of the product. Fourth, there'll be a calculation of total price for all the products when it's time to purchase them. Fifth, there'll be payment options for the purchase of the products. And then finally, a receipt is to be produced for the customer as a record of the transaction. So as you can see, we've got six steps here. What I've tried to do is color code things as well. So everything written in blue is kind of an input output to highlight that I'll be using the input output symbol in my flowchart. Uh, words written in pink there to reflect the processes taking place in this system to show that I'll be using my process rectangle within my flowchart. And you can see for point five, I've got the pink and blue writing there. That's to allude to that I'm going to be using some sub programs that allude to um, other actual functions that this flowchart will be linking to, but won't have all the processes listed here on my actual flowchart. So let's start looking at the diagram itself. So I'll start off with my Terminator, beginning the program. First step is to get that barcode. So we've got to scan that in as a user input and to get our barcode data. And then as the next step states, we've then got to search that barcode within the system. And then the product that it links me to, I need to retrieve its product price, okay? And re obviously return that product price back so then we can display it on screen, okay? Confirming that we've scanned the right product and this is how much it costs. The next step then is for our total, the total equals total plus product price. Now, upon the first item, it's exactly what product price is. Total is zero right now, okay? So whatever the first product is, that would be the price that I'd be expecting at this point. Then we get to a decision. Now, it is a post-test repetition that's going to happen here because essentially, is there another item? That's the first thing we've got to decide because I can buy one item on their own. Okay, but if it is somewhere like a grocery store, I'm probably buying many items. So that leads to us creating a body of the loop in a post-test repetition. Okay, and then I can scan my second product, retrieve its, get its barcode in order to retrieve its product price. And now for total, it's going to already equal my first product's price plus now the new product price of my second product and add them together. And now I've got a total for two products. And then obviously that pattern will continue for each product now I do after that until the point where there are no more items for me to scan. Then I'll be moving on now and my total price will be displayed on screen. Okay, this obviously is important to display now because this is what I'm going to be asking the actual customer to pay for. So our next step now is to process the transaction. Now, in order to process this transaction, we'll have another decision coming up, deciding whether we're gonna use a card payment. Now, for both these avenues, we're gonna do a binary selection. And if it is a card payment, all right, then we're gonna be using the FPOS subprogram. So I'm using the subprogram uh, symbol here, cause I'm not gonna go into all the steps of how FPOS would be used. And obviously that is a complicated actual function, but I'm showing that it links to another subprogram here. And that's the importance of that symbol and why we use that symbol. All right, we use FPOS. If FPOS all goes good, it will then display the receipt. Okay, which will then be returned to the customer as their proof of the transaction. And that will be their finalization of their process. The other alternative, if they aren't going to do a card payment, then is going to be a cash payment. And that in itself would be a sub program as well. And that would have its own actual processes involved with that as well. Probably not as complex as FPOS, but still that could be something I show in another flow chart. All right, but I don't really have the space here to show it. And obviously it has its own explanations and complexities to related to it that to talk about. So we'll leave that one as a sub program there too. And that's some logic for you to think of when you're creating your flow charts, how you might use multiple flow charts to explain an overall system as well. But if the cash payment goes through well as uh, okay, then that will also lead to the display of the receipt, confirming the transaction took place in that manner. Obviously, once we've got the receipt, 
this system is complete and then we can show our final terminator ending the actual flowchart there so i hope this actual example has shown you how a checkout systems logic may work you can see here that i've got two control structures uh, in action okay well i've actually got three control structures if you count sequence but you can see at the beginning as i am actually scanning my barcodes i've got post test repetition happening there for allowing me to continually scan products into the system and the system asking me are there any more products to go and then once I get to my payment methods, I've got a binary selection allowing me to choose between FPOS or cash payment. And maybe that's something you can relate to when you go to the store now. And you can think of this logic when you're actually buying your products next time when you're at the store. But hopefully this all makes logical sense to you and it helps you with the understanding of flowcharts.